Okay, so in this video, I just want to talk about how you can align models um, if you if you're afraid of losing their occlusion and how things are related to each other. Uh, a little tip that might help, uh, and usually this is using Mesh Mixer, uh, free software. So anyway, uh, for instance, this is a case where this patient was brought in for an occlusal appliance. It's actually an, an apnea appliance, but um, it, you can see the bite is uh, taken in an in relationship. So the problem is, is that that makes it even harder to bring teeth back to where they're supposed to be if we do any sort of manipulations. How do I find where the bite was to begin with? Um, so there are lots of ways of doing that, but I want to talk about one quick way um, that I think can save you a lot of hassle. So for instance, what I plan to do is I plan to take this uh, this model out here and open another program. In this case, it's going to be Blue Sky Plan, and I'm going to generate uh, an overlay over top of these teeth. But the problem is, is I like to reorient the model in that. So let's show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to take this model and I'm going to um, turn it and I'm probably going to turn it like this. I'm going to make my mesh and then I'm going to have to make some adjustments for the occlusion. But the problem is now that it's positioned like this, well the bite's not right. Um, so the appliance would be in this axis and so how do I reorient that appliance? How do I get it back to zero if you will? Uh, so that's where I'm going to talk about here. Um, uh, for, and for now, I'm just going to hit Control Z to re, uh, reverse what I've done, and I'm going to hit Accept. Well, sorry, I'm going to hit Accept. I just need to hit re, uh, back out of there. So anyway, so what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to be creating what you might call it like a save point, uh, a way to a reference point for the future. So I'm going to close off the lower, and I'm going to bring in a mesh. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to use my standard little box of a mesh. I don't want to touch the surface. Here's an example of what that looks like. If I hit delete and I don't want um, okay, if I if I grab onto here and actually hover over top of the surface it gets all oriented like that. That could work and it would probably work just fine for what I'm about to do but if you do that it, you'll kind of have to figure out your own steps uh, or sequence so I would advise not doing that. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and click on this, drag it right close, but not actually on the model. It comes up huge. I'm just going to click here. Right now, I have the uniform scaling checked. The default is to be checked, but if you've unchecked that in Mesh Mixer, just be aware. It'll be easier to go ahead and check that. I type 5, and then I hit tab. So all, now I know it's a 5 millimeter uh, cube. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it forward so I can tell it's right over top of the palette here, just barely. Where it is in the space, doesn't really matter all that much. I'm just trying to keep it away from where I'm going to be working. So there we go. Hit accept. So now this model and this block are oriented together, but I want to actually combine the two of them. So I'm going to hold control and click the mesh. Once again, I, I clicked here, hold control, click there. So these two are selected. I'm going to click combine. And now this model is the combination of the two objects. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit duplicate um, because I want to. Th this isn't something you'll have to do because all, at this point you're done. You have this cube, okay? So um, th and then you're going to work up your case, do whatever you're doing with it, and just that cube is going to stay a part of the whole thing. Now let's pretend. Let's turn off the original one, and now let's manipulate this one as though we brought it into another software. I'm going to change it and all three, uh, the different axes, um, and you can move it around, it doesn't really matter where you put it, but um, as you can uh, hopefully agree, this is completely different in all planes than my original. Well, how do I find it? Uh, the, key, the, the key is going to be the cube, if you will. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click a line. Now, whether you have the original visible or not is up to you. Uh, sometimes it gets in the way, but we're going to for the sake of uh, ease of use, we're gonna, I'm going to turn it off. For not, or I'm going to leave it on until I need to turn it off, just so you can see what's happening. Um, I'm going to click Align, and I want a surface point. And you can have any one of these um, uh, coordinate systems set. I'm going to stick with Y up. You can account for that later at any point. So what's, I'm going to turn off the original so I can see a little better. You can click anywhere on this invisible model and it will move the orientation. Okay, It is going to basically, that specific point of space of the model is going to orient with the y-axis being up from that coordinate. So what we're going to do is we're going to click a, a bot, this box 
which we know is flat. Okay? So we know it's a flat surface, and now that has oriented. I'm going to hit accept, and let's look at what that's done for us. Do you notice that the two are now level? Uh, it may not be obvious that they're exactly level, but they are. The plane of illusions are lined up. They may not be in the same space, and there, there's also a rotation remaining to account for. But that's okay, because we're now going to deal with that. And it's going to be very simple. All we're going to do is hit Align. And we're going to now, let's turn that thing invisible again so we don't, that doesn't get in the way. We're going to find this box, and now we're going to pick a different surface. Not before we picked right on the occlusal surface of that box, if you will. I'm now going to click right here on the outside surface. And now it may not look right, but just trust me for a second. I'm going to hit Accept. Now I can open up my model, and I think, well, that's not right. Not, it's, it's at least 90 degrees. Well, the, unique, the, the nice thing is, is it's actually exactly 90 degrees. And 90 degrees is an easy adjustment to make. We can work with specific known measurements very well. I can click on Transform or just hit the T button. It pops up this little uh, widget. Click right here, and this allows me to change the angle. Now you could move until you think you're at 90, but that's not ideal. Come over to these little hash marks and it will click on five millimeter, five degree increments. Once here, it's at 90, and now these two are perfectly lined up. They're not in the same space, but they are very close or as far as the axes. Now we just have to line them up, which is actually relatively easy. These arrows go forward and backward. This triangle allows me to go to both coordinate systems. So this is not an exact alignment, but it's going to get us very close. And it's, I find it to be actually quite easy to get it about as close as you're ever going to get with any sort of relationship that we use in dentistry. Um, materials we all know compress slightly. So basically what I'm looking for is that point when they all everything looks sort of um, fuzzy, uh, if that makes sense. Because then I know that they're occupying the same, spa uh, same space. And that looks pretty good to me. Um, again, it might be as much as uh, you know, 500 of a millimeter off. But, and as you zoom in, you can be more detailed with your movements. And let's intrude this just a touch. Okay, so now I would say these are pretty much perfectly lined up. Again, you know, you're, I can't imagine you're going to use any sort of material that's going to be more precise than that. So again, it would be nice if we get even more precise, but um, I, for my, me and my work, this is going to work uh, just fine. So hopefully that's a quick little tip for you for how you can maintain your coordinate system. So just to repeat, what have we done and what is the point? All I am suggesting is that if you think there's any chance you're going to be taking this STL into whatever software and you think you're going to reorient it, you're going to move it around, and you're afraid that you're not going to be able to find out where your original zero was in relationship to your opposing arch, just add a very known geometry like a cube. The cube has flat surfaces. It's easy to click on, and it's going to give us 90 degrees. It's going to be off to 90 degrees or 180 degrees, it's not going to be, it's going to be things that are very easy to correct for. All right, I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments.